Good day C3 parents, I'm your host Karin Pito and today we are going to dive right into one of the most interesting fascinating aspects of raising a child between the age of two and four. Now we've, some of us have seen the social media joke that I never knew that I could ruin someone's life by pouring juice in the wrong color cup and the reason our children actually have that kind of reaction with the wrong cut of crust or the wrong spread on the bread or even pouring juice in the wrong cup is quite an interesting phase that our kids are going through. Now from birth we intuitively reacted to our children's needs. They started just so, sort of feeling hungry and magically food appears on their plate. They start to sort of feeling thirsty and there's juice or milk or um, the breast is offered. So it is a whole journey of them living a life or their life experience up to that point was that the parent was intuitively reacting and giving to the child what they meeting their needs and meeting it in a way that satisfies them. So they have no other point of reference regarding how life works. Now at the age of two they actually start verbalizing or start indicating when they are hungry, start taking a bit more control over themselves and their own needs and then when you pour the juice in the wrong color cup they are not just disappointed, they are confused because their whole life experience, the way that they view life has just been challenged. Their world view has just been put in a different spot in a different place and it takes our kids time and it takes their brain time to understand that we do not share one in the same brain. We are not pinky and the brain. We don't think what the other person thinks. So how do we parent this? How do we handle this? How do we get over the hurdle of having these meltdowns or having these fights um, with our kids especially after a very long day? Initially it's it's quite tiresome and it is a long process. You often have to explain to your child that you know what we don't share the same brain and you need to tell me certain things but they work from the place of assumption the same as what we do as parents because my kid loved peanut butter yesterday and the day before and today I make a peanut butter sandwich and it's the end of the world because when they felt hungry they maybe have felt like eating a cheese sandwich but they never communicated it to us. So the basic foundation where we actually start parenting this is instead of just working from a, space of, a place of assumption, going to your child and asking them, would you like a sandwich? What would you like on your sandwich? And double checking and making sure and giving them options and choices. Let's take the, the, the sandwich choice um, in an easy step-by-step -step process. Now initially it, it feels bothersome and tiresome but what happens is we are teaching our children um, first of all to be specific in what they need and to use their words and explain properly what they need it actually develops their communication skills which is going through a renaissance period literally now from two to, to age seven and it's helping them building those building blocks in um, expressing and asking and being okay to ask for what they need. So the first thing we do is we, like it's lunchtime. Go to to your child and say, "What kind of would you like to have a sandwich?" They may feel like eating fruit or eating yogurt or eating something else that is not bread. Um, so would you like to have a sandwich? If the answer is yes, then you go, all right, what would you like to put on the sandwich? Why don't you come with me to the kitchen and I'll show you what is available to put on the sandwich. And then you can take them to the kitchen and give them the different options, especially when they're about two, two and a half, rather show them the options. As they grow older, you can just list the options verbally, but they remember their visual memory regarding things are, are that they're relying a lot more on their visual memory or actually identifying things um, to put thing, or things in their head together and exactly what they want. And then they pick something and then you can say all right you can help me or you can stay and you can keep me company or you can go play. When you're done let's say for instance I chose cheese you put the cheese on you 
ask them if they want to open or close the sandwich and you show them the difference open or closed and let them pick let's say they picked a closed sandwich then you get to the cutting bit which usually ruins any child's day um, and you can say all right would you like it cut in triangles would you like it cut in squares how many pieces do you want to get it cut into you can give them so many options so that they can describe the picture in their head to you so that you can give it so that they can actually start learning that you're not sharing a brain that you're not one and the same person and so that they can start developing that skill of being specific and, and addressing what they need and it really helps in the long run when it comes to bigger issues and bigger challenges if we don't start with the small things like sandwiches and color of cup or color of plate um, and it sounds whimsical and it almost sounds like oh no but I'm, I'm my world now all of a sudden revolves around my child um, it is not really about that that is it, it giving them options about sandwiches and how they want it cut and what they would like on it and and having them participate develops their language skills and develops their relational skills to a point where they can then when they really get stuck with difficult things that they sit with options or or where they have an idea that they can actually communicate their ideas the picture that they see in their their head um, more clearly to other people one of the biggest things that happens especially between adults well between people in general is miscommunication because we jump to conclusions we we don't make sure that we have the same picture or similar picture what the other person has when we leave that conversation and that means that our communication skills are lacking by having these conversations with our children by stepping into this specific unique developmental leap while their brain is still re like developing the, the understanding that we don't share the same brain by stepping into it by equipping our children with communication skills we're setting them up to a lifetime that is less assumptions less misunderstandings and far better quality communication that comes not just between you and them but between them and the rest of the world that is where i'm going to end today's chat have a beautiful day please comment down below what are you struggling with we want to hear from you hit that like button hit subscribe ring that bell so you can get notifications when we upload new videos and let us know how you are doing as a parent we want to help you we want to journey with you We'll see you on the next installment. Have a great day.